We certainly had a productive week around here. We're going to fellowship all getting ready for uh, the 50th anniversary. And by the way, tomorrow night, um, what, what time is it coming? Okay. About 5.30, 6 o'clock. We're going to have a work night. So if you can make it tomorrow night, we're going to be working on the floor in the fellowship hall. Um, that would be a blessing. So I'll give you a little bit more when before the end of the service about that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. The brother Harold is going to read our missions letter from the Gilmer family, uh, missionaries in Brazil. And then um, then we're going to uh, have favorites tonight. So if you have a favorite song, you want to send you later. Then, right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll... Uh, Bless the service tonight. We pray that you'll use it um, in our life. Help us as we look into your word and we think about a principle tonight from the Bible. I pray, Lord, that you'll uh, help us to apply it to our lives. Um, help us as we sing songs for a few moments and then take prayer requests, Lord. Uh, may you be in all that we do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, go ahead. The Gilmores, they're part of the Zion Ministries. It says, Dear Friends of Zion, thank the Lord for His provision another month, and thank you for praying and giving for our ministries. Praise God, the cataract and retina surgeries on my eye were successful. I can see better from my right eye now without a lens than I could see with the lens previously. Removal of the cataract in my left eye had to be rescheduled for September 2nd. I was looking over a piece of property near our main church and accidentally fell flat on my face, breaking my nose. This also required surgery, but I am now back to my normal activities. Linda is recuperating well from her broken femur. The physical therapist is very pleased with her progress. Her mobility has been restored. And they said they were pleasantly surprised. Our four children were in our home for one evening, only the second time they've been together in Brazil in the last 30 years. Our multiple house hospital visits this past month produced some interesting results. As Harold Ralph and I were preparing to leave the hospital after a broken nose surgery, a nurse came rush, rushing into our room. Earlier, we had given her a track inviting her to church. We had pointed out an app to hear the BBN radio in Portuguese and another to read online the Bible we published and to consult with the concordance online as well. She was so interested that Ralph, Harold Ralph, also gave her a te New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs. Could you give New Testaments to all my colleagues too, she asked, deciding. They want one like mine, so we did. In the parking lot, when I offered a track to Jackson, a man who parks cars, he said, don't you remember me? You gave me a track and an invitation to go to church near my house. I'm attending services there now. Praise the Lord, my God, richly bless you all. <laughs> Anybody got a favorite they'd like to see? <laughs>
The oxen, uh, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increases by the strength of the ox. Help us to look for ways to apply this principle in our own life. And uh, uh, help us to, to take this well. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so first thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about what it says. What it says. So let's just break, let's go through this little verse, uh, phrase by phrase, and talk about it. So it says, first off, where no oxen are. What's an ox? An ox um, is just a cow that's bred for work. Okay, it's used for work. It's a work cow. Okay, and up until recently, uh, an ox was one of the most important tools that a farmer could have. Um, they would use the ox to plow. They would use the ox uh, to harvest. They would use the ox to pull a cart. Um, the ox was like an animal version of a tractor. Okay. So, where no oxen are. Look at the next phrase. It says, the crib is clean. So, an ox is like an animal tractor, but it's still an animal, right? And so, you have to store it somewhere. You have to put it in a barn, put it in a stall, all right? And then, because it's an animal, you have to feed it, right? So, you have to cut hay, or you have to uh, have other, some other form of silage, and you have to store all that hay somewhere. Um, by the way, I, I have cut hay one time in my life, and it was enough, okay? I am, I am grateful that that is not my life. Uh, that was, it was an education that I wish to never have again. Um, with a bunch of uh, Mexican folk, those people can work too. All right, um, so you have to, you have to uh, feed the animal, right? You have to store the animal, all right? And then what's, what's the next thing? You have to clean up after the animal. Okay, I'm gonna put this lightly. The ox is going to um, soil the stall, right? Uh, there's gonna be ox manure. Um, and uh, so if you have an ox and you have the ox stall, then the, if you don't take care of that, there's gonna be issues. The barn is gonna start to stink. So look at that phrase again. It says, where no oxen are, the crib is clean. What it's saying is if you don't wanna deal with the messes, that the ox makes, there's a simple answer. Don't have an ox, right? If you don't want to deal with the messes the ox makes, don't have an ox. But then look at the next word. It says, but. So Solomon's saying, wait a minute. He's making a contrast here. He's teaching us something. He says, much increase is by the strength of the ox. So if you don't have an ox, what do you got to do? Well, if you're a farmer, that means you have to plow by hand. You have to harvest by hand. You have to pull the cart by hand. You have to mow by hand. All right? In other words, if you don't have an ox, you don't get hardly, nearly as much done. Okay? So that's what the verse is saying. Now, how does that apply to us? What does it mean? All right, let's talk about that for a minute. Okay, obviously this is not a verse just about oxen. It's a, it's a life principle, and the principle is this. Okay, the principle is... If you want increase in your life, you have to deal with messes. If you want increase in your life, you have to deal with messes. So, little illustration. We're working on the fellowship hall this week. Uh, Brother Dick, myself, uh, Jeff was there today. Brother Adams worked on it. And if you've been to the fellowship hall for years, as long as I've been here, probably 15 years before I came here, there's been a giant crack that goes all the way through the fellowship hall. And it's an uneven crack, so it scares me because I'm always afraid that Brother Lyle or someone's going to trip over that crack and uh, hurt themselves. And it's ugly, right? It's ugly. Um, and it's got uh, about 30 coats of paint on it because I'm told that Brother, uh, Brother Poland's favorite pastime is painting the floor in the fellowship hall with the cheapest paint that he could find, right? Uh, whatever the oops paint was at Home Depot or whatever. <laughs> All right. So several years ago, we tried to remove that paint with chemicals. It did not work. Okay. All it did was make a bigger mess. And uh, so the floor has been really ugly for a couple of years. And so this week, we rented uh, this thing called, I think it was called a scarifier. It was this, this big, heavy grinding machine. And what it did was it grind, ground down that crack in the floor. We had to walk back and forth and grind that crack back and forth, back and forth, and boy, did it make a mess. And then we rented another machine that spins 
uh, with a spinning tool and it spins and cuts up all the paint. Um, and it does a great job. It's awesome <laughs> to see 30 coats of paint just disappear like that when you run that thing over it. Okay. Um, but it made a mess and you can go over there and I can see there's still a mess. There's piles of paint chips all over the place. Okay. There's dust. We've unloaded multiple shop backs full of dust. It's a big project. And uh, tomorrow night we're going to work on it some more if you want to help. All right. Um, we've spent a lot of time on that. We get a lot of time left to spend on it. But here's the thing. If we didn't make that mess, there would never be any progress. There was no way to progress, to, to progress there without making a mess. Okay? And sometimes in life, there's a mess that has to be gotten through in order for us to make progress on something. Okay? The Bible says, where, there, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increases by the strength of the ox. If you want to have increase, you have to deal with the messes. All right, so how do we apply that to different areas in our life? Let's, let's just talk about this. How about marriage? Okay. Um, you know, I, I, a lot of, there's, there's specific times when people end their marriage. And I think probably the most common time when people end their marriage is about 18 months or so after they get married. Okay. A lot of divorces happen right then. Why is that? Because marriage is messy. Right? Um, everybody gets married and they think they're marrying Mr. Right or Mrs. Right. And then they wake up uh, a week later and they're like, what did I do? All right? Except for me. All right? My wife is perfect in every way, shape, or form. I'm the lucky one. All right? But everybody thinks that way. But it doesn't, it doesn't really work that way, does it? Okay? Marriage is work. You have to work at it. It, it hurts, hurts to say that. But the fact that I am a fallen, sinful human being, married to another fallen, sinful human being, and both of us have our own desires and we want to go our own way, okay? Um, we have to work at it. You have to work at it. You have to spend time together. You have to go on dates. You have to talk. You have to do all that stuff, okay? It's work. It's messy. And so a lot of people don't want to deal with that mess, and they, they end it. Families. Families. Kids are messy, right? Boy, are they messy. Um, especially when you have three of them, and they're really young. They're really, really messy. Uh, but, you know, um, a lot of people, a lot of people just become super passive as their kids get older. Um, because raising kids is messy. And it's hard, and it takes work. And um, when you see somebody that has well-behaved kids, well-adjusted kids. You're seeing somebody that's worked at it, okay? It doesn't just happen. They've kept that ox. They've dealt with those messes. Um, notice I didn't say that when we were talking about marriage. That would have <laughs> made you all laugh a little bit. All right. Um, what about work, all right? You look at somebody that's successful in their work. And the chances are they had to deal with messes to get there. And they're dealing with messes that other people don't want to deal with. That's, that's why people uh, in our society, usually that's why they are well compensated. is because they're willing to deal with things that other people are not. All right, you look at a doctor. A doctor is a doctor because they study, because they went to school forever, because after they went to school forever with hundreds of thousands of debt, they, uh, they put themselves in some kind of an internship program where they made next to nothing for a long time. Um, and then they, they graduate, and they've got this huge, all these problems to deal with that you and I don't have to deal with. And they're compensated very, very well for that. Because if you didn't, nobody would do it. Uh, there's a huge mess they have to deal with. Okay? And I want to say something to teenagers. Listen. Nobody is going to pay you to browse Instagram and play video games, okay? Um, if you're going, if you want to be able to take care of your family someday, you have to buckle down and do some things that are a mess that you don't want to do. Maybe you go to classes you don't want to go to. Maybe you do jobs uh, that, that you don't want to do, but you have to do it or you'll never get there. You have to deal with some messes, all right? Uh, you'll get absolutely nowhere if you just try to take it easy on yourself all the time. 
So you can live without the ox, but you won't have very much increase. Um, let's look at some more uh, applications of this. What about church? Okay? I want you to think about this for a second. Our church could insist on being comfortable and not having any messes. And you know what we would be doing? All right? We would be doing nothing. We would be resigning ourselves to dying a slow death. That's what we would be doing. Okay? We would be putting our church in hospice mode. And just, just keep us comfortable while we die. And honestly, if you're going to, a, a lot of churches are that way. A lot of churches are that way. Okay? And some of you older folks need to hear this and you need to think about this because as you get older, um, as you get older, you want to stay comfortable. All right? You don't want to mi mix things up. Okay? You kind of just want to coast a little bit. You don't want to rock the boat. But if you want to have increase, okay, uh, you got to deal with some messes. You got to. You, there, there's no such thing as increase that's comfortable. There's always messes that go along with it. Um, we're starting a bus ministry. You know what that's going to do? That's going to bring messes, lots of messes. Okay, the bus is going to need drivers. It's going to need workers. We're going to be bringing kids in, and you know, you know what? When you bring in kids, they have messes. Okay. Um, their families will have messes. Um, you know what we do? We can do, we can avoid the messes. We can not do that at all. All right? Or we can say, God has called us to preach the gospel to every creature, to try to reach families. This is a method that we can do it. We're just going to deal with the messes so that we can have the increase. All right? Um, you know, every time you come to church, every time you come to church, uh, maybe not tonight, but every time you come to church, the church is clean, right? Um, and the hymn books are straightened up, and the trash is picked up. Can I tell you something? That doesn't do itself. All right? Um, you know how long it lasts? You know how long it lasts? Miss Cindy can tell you. Miss Joe can tell you. You know how long it lasts? One service. That's how long it lasts. There are volunteers that come in here and clean the church, and they spend hours doing it, and it lasts for one service. Almost as soon as it's done, it's ready to be done again. And, you know, we have patch clubs here on Thursday nights during the school year. Those kids make a mess. It's like a hurricane went through here every Thursday night. All right? And the ladies come in with a smile on their face on, on Friday morning, and they look around. And you know what I'm thinking? Wow. I'm sure they're thinking, man, these kids make a mess. This job would be a lot easier if we didn't have patch clubs. All right? Um... Bringing in new families. Uh, sometimes that's a mess. Sometimes they don't know how to act. Sometimes they bring their problems with them. Okay, people are problems, and people are gonna bring their problems with them. Okay, children. Bringing children to church bring messes. All right, kids don't know how to act. Kids go up to the, the glass, the nice French glass doors, and they stick their tongue out on it, <laughs> rubbing their fingerprints all over those glass doors. Okay, they don't know what they don't know how to act. All right, they're, sometimes they run around like crazy. They break things. They make noise while I preach. Sometimes you know, they have to be taught how to behave. And look, here's what we could do. We can sit back and go. Kids are too loud in this church. All right, look, we ought to be grateful we have kids in our church because there are lots of churches in our town and around the country that have no kids, that have no kids. They might have big, beautiful buildings, but they have no kids, no young families, okay? Um, there, are, there are lots of churches full of gray-haired people, uh, and you know what? That's fine. That's fine. We need to have gray-haired people. We don't need to push those people away, okay? But if your church is just all gray-haired people, your church has no future, those children are the future of the church, and they might be a mess, and they might run around sometimes, and they might need to learn how to behave. Well, you have to keep that ox and clean that crib, all right? Um, and here's the temptation. The temptation is just to start avoiding messes. The temptation is to say, well, we don't need all this trouble, okay? We don't need all this mess. We don't need this ox. But much increase comes from the strength of the ox. And you know what we could do? We could be like, well, I mean, it's such a hassle to get everything together and to have services. And, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a hassle to preach 
uh, three times a week. Maybe I could do better if I just preached once a week, you know, and we could just cut out all our services uh, and we could do nothing for, for families and we could have a lot less mess to clean up, okay? And you know what? We wouldn't be doing anything either. There wouldn't be any increase there either, okay? So the, pro the thing is, if you want increase, you have to deal with messes. Um, so we talked about applying this principle to marriage, to family, to work, to church. One more thing here is just the idea of God's will, okay? I'll tell you what I mean. Um, I believe God has something for everybody to do. Every Christian, God has a will for their life, okay? God does not call any Christians to sit on the sideline. Uh, Christianity is not supposed to be a spectator sport. Everybody is supposed to be involved. God has something for everybody to do. Everybody has a battle and a war they have to fight. Everybody is a servant. Remember that word, servant of God. Okay? But a lot of Christians expect for their walk to be easy. Easy. And Jesus did say, he said, remember, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Okay? We like the word easy. And we like the word light. But we forget in that sentence it also says yoke and burden. Okay? Um, a yoke is something you put on an ox to do work. A burden yeah. is something to be born. Okay? It's easier than the burden and the yoke that we would bear if we were not following God's will. But that doesn't mean... That there is no burden. And that doesn't mean that there is no yoke. It doesn't mean that there is no hardship. Um, and God's will isn't going to be easy. It's probably going to come with messes, just like everything else in life. Good, uh, let me read some phrases from the Bible, and I want you to finish them for me, because I know you can. All right? 1 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought a good uh, fight. <coughs> Walking with God is a fight. Fighting is not easy. Okay? How about this one? Now, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's uh, 2 Timothy 2 3. Galatians 6 9. Let us not be what in well doing? Let us not be weary in well doing, because in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Okay? The Bible is full of verses that indicate to us. That there is a struggle for us to go through. There is, a, there is work to be done. There's a burden to be borne. There's a fight, a fight to be fought. And it's not going to be easy. It's not supposed to be. If it's easy, it's easy because Jesus is in the yoke with us. Okay? It's easy because Jesus is carrying the burden with us. But it doesn't mean that there's no messes that need to be cleaned up. So here's the principle. The principle is if you want increase in your life, in any area of your life, if you want to increase, it always comes with messes, okay? And what you can't do is you can't be looking for the easy path all the time. You can't be looking to stay comfortable all the time. You can't be looking to never challenge yourself, okay? There's going to be problems that come. There's going to be messes that come with anything worth doing. What we need to do is what this verse says, when the oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. We don't need to take the easy road. We need to deal with the difficulty so that we can get to the increase. That's the principle of the matter. All right? Um, Proverbs 14, 4. All right, let's, uh, let's take prayer requests tonight. So if you'll take your... I was pretty sure I put a prayer sheet up here. Who's... I've got one extra for you. Thank you. She knows me well. All right. Okay, a couple of uh, things to mention here tonight. The big one I want to mention is pray for Miss Ellie. Um, Miss Ellie found out uh, this last weekend that she has uh, her cancer has come back. Now, it's not, uh, it's not anywhere near as bad as it was. It's still very small. In fact, they're not even going to do uh, chemo. Um, or radiation. They're going to use a different treatment. Um, but she's got to go, she's got to get back into this cycle of going down to Barnes every three weeks. And, um, and she's, she was so upbeat about uh, what the Lord is, is going to do for her and God's plan for her, but she's just tired of being a burden to her family. Just pray for Miss Ellie. 
and uh, pray that the Lord will help her through this. I'm sure she'd appreciate that. All right. Um, pray for our 50th anniversary that's coming up. Pray for uh, Spencer Smith, basic training in Texas. Uh, kids going back to school. There's a lot of stuff on here. The Poland's traveling. I just wonder why we're so low tonight. Because mm -hmm. Poland's are all gone. All right. Um, uh, any other prayer requests that you'd like to, to bring attention to? Yes, Ms. Joe. Um, Sale, I have a procedure. He has to have done next Tuesday. And we have to go to Chicago. So we should just be out. We should end up just praying for that. And then we're leaving on Saturday. Okay. That's our head of Michigan. All right, anybody else for request you'd like to mention? Yes, ma'am. Well, he has blood work and talks to the cancer doctor tomorrow. Brother Willard? Yes. I have an unspoken. Unspoken? His name is not spoken. Any other prayer requests? Yes. Not a prayer request to pray, but then uh -huh. uh, we're going to be getting the carrier and the hitch for the car this week. Awesome, that's awesome. I know that was a prayer request that you had. So, great. Yes, ma'am. I just have an update on Brittany. She had her PET scan on Monday, and they come back really good that they couldn't find anything. So she's going to be going in for a surgery real quickly. Okay. And we're all going to turn back because I'm going to have to help a lot. All right. <laughs> are, is, your, are, is your farm stand stuff lining now? Well, we got another set of stuff coming on, so I think no. Steve's going to be helping no. us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Steve. <laughs> All right, pray for you guys. All right, anybody else? Very close. Okay. Um, I know that you all have more prayer requests than that. Share them with your prayer group that we, as we go and, and pray here in a second. Um, we're going to have a missionary here on Sunday morning. Uh, I don't know if you remember Arnold Alagayo, uh, a little Filipino guy that was here two or three years ago. And uh, I've been keeping up with his ministry in the Philippines. The Lord's really used him, and I think it's going to be exciting. So he's going to be with us on Sunday morning. Um, and uh, looking forward to that. Pray for him as he's traveling. All right, let's go to our groups and...